high levels of sugar in foods are associated with obesity. Sugars are also the basis of many medicines. Glucose fructose syrup is a type of sugar that is added to many foods. It is a mixture of glucose and fructose. Ring structures are shown below and you've got your nice little skeletal formulas. Uh, write the molecular formula for fructose. Okay, so this is all about can you count. Let me just get my wee highlighter up for this one. Right, so let's start with carbons. There's one here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we've got C6. Let's now go for our for our hydrogens. Let's make it a little bit smaller because otherwise I'm not going to run out. I'm going to run out of space. So we've got one, two, three, four, five already given, and then we've got two round here, five, six, seven, one up here, eight, one down here, nine, ten, eleven, and one here, twelve. Okay. And our oxygens are nice and simple because uh, they're obviously here one two three four five six okay there we go um so this is an isomer of glucose because c6h12o6 i would expect you to recognize that to be honest okay suggest with reference to the structures how uh, your proton nmr spectroscopy could be used to distinguish between glucose and fructose okay so you're looking at these two structures, and apart from the fact that fructose is now very colourful, um, you can see that there is an obvious difference. We have a total shift here in terms of where the shape of the ring is. Okay, so we've got this is different from the structure down this side. Okay, and so really it's only worth one mark. So what we're seeing, and what you need to really pick up on, is we have different hydrogen environments. So you'll get a different shift pattern. And that's really it. Okay, lots of different ways you can see it, but that's all you're talking about is different hydrogen environments means that you will get a different pattern when you actually take them through the NMR spec. Okay, we have got um, a more accurate representation of the structure of glucose and its geometric isomer galactose is shown below. Here we go. Okay, with reference to the structure shown, explain why sugars such as glucose and galactose can have geometric isomers. Now, your normal geometric isomers, you're looking for a double bond. And that double bond then fixes your way that we can look at it. Okay, there are no double bonds in here. So if you start talking about double bonds, you're going to lose the mark. What you do have is something else that is forcing a conformation. And that's what you need to recognise. This ring here is a very specific shape. And you can see that it is forcing the conformation in a particular way. And that is what you need to say. Okay, so the ring forces set, conformation, set orientation. Okay, so if you have that ring, then the groups that you add to it, whether they be up, down, or sides, or whatever, um, they are going to be a particular shape, and therefore that's geometric. Okay, right, still on glucose. Uh, we've got the ring structure exists in equilibrium with its open chain structure. Here's your open chain. State the number of chiral centres in D-glucose. Right, that's, there's quite a few. Um, so we're looking for carbons which have four different substituent groups attached to it. So here we go. Get rid of this one because this is C double bond O bond H. Okay, and get rid of this one because it's got two hydrogens attached. But every other one in here is a chiral centre. So number of chiral centres in here. Four. Draw an open chain structural formula for an optical isomer. So what you need to do there is to switch one of the chiral centres. So to be honest, I would just redraw the whole thing and flip the OH and H on this. Or you could do the same here, or here, or here. Okay, um, that's it. Okay, Relzen, Relenza. Relenza, I think we're going with, is a sugar-based medicine used to treat the flu virus. It acts by attaching to an enzyme's active site structure as shown. Suggest how the functional group circled would bind with part of the enzyme's active site. Okay, so we're just looking at this bit here. We're saying this is the pharmacophore, the bit that's actually having a, an active part. Um, okay, so really in here it's the nitrogens that are going to be involved. You know that if you've got an N and O or an F, we're looking at hydrogen bonding. Um, what we would also say is we've got some lone pairing going on here with the nitrogen. So what we could also have 
is date of covalence. Either of those. What you can't do, be very careful, there is nothing to do with charge in terms of a full charge, ionic charge, so this is not ionic bonding. Okay. Um, the structure of the natural active compound sialic acid is shown below. Okay, so it binds to the same part of the enzyme's active site. Right, so we know where it said it was binding. So find the area here. You're like, okay, so this is this bit down here then that's going to bind. Um, oh, down a little bit. Circle the functional groups on this molecule which are most likely to bind with the active site. Now, being tricky here, it says functional groups, so I'm going to have at least more than one. Um, and I would say the most likely ones would be these two, but they have also got this one circled on the mark scheme. Okay, it says two out of the three gets you the mark. Okay, that's it.